Hey Void, how you doing? Tibby Brazo, day 26, and we were on Tubi. And when I queued up today's movie, I did not have a lot of hopes. Tubi had not been kind to me lately. Between Candy Corn and uh, Alpine Lake, I hadn't been having a good time with Tubi. Now today, when it gave me Blood Pie, pie is in the Greek numeral, oh, or Greek letter, anyway, meaning like a sorority, I did not have a lot of hope, especially being a 2020 release, but I was a little bit surprised here. Now, I can't say Blood Pie is a good movie. It's not. But I was strangely enjoying it. It's a sort of a guilty pleasure kind of movie. It's nonsensical, but there's something about the characters that did draw me in a little bit on this one, and okay. And it's a lot of potential here, it's just not the best executed. And a lot of that, the problems I initially had with it were at the beginning, because it just kind of starts with no explanation, and I kept expecting something to be explained along the way, and it never really got back to me. So... When you first open with uh, a college girl just killing her parents, you do, and making a quip about it, I kind of got the feeling for the type of movie I was in for, but then it kind of cuts away and uh, we're in class. And we're being introduced to our main characters, and including the girl who just killed her parents in the first scene. Admittedly, I didn't realize it was the same girl, because her hairstyle was completely different, and but yeah, okay, so I guess it was her. Now, this movie revolves around her, a girl named Amber, trying to befriend a social, the, the nerdy girl, Agathy, and uh, not doing very good at it because she's sort of insane. And she's doing all she can to pretty much do the makeover thing, and she's well on her way, but she doesn't handle making new friends very well and gets possessive and a little reacts poorly to any hint of rejection. Which causes Agathy to, well, the sorority sisters, the, the pie girls, essentially decide to now see that Agathy's now pretty after the makeover Amber gave her. They, they kind of lure her into their world of sex, drugs, and partying, mostly as a way of just messing with both her and Amber. And Amber gets in the habit of killing anyone who crosses her or her friend Agony. And it goes from there. Now, when it opened up like that, and then it kept going on with uh, Amber, I was expecting for a reason why she just suddenly started killing people, because it's clear that those two, like, when she killed her parents, that was, like, sort of her first victims, as far as I can tell, so why she suddenly started killing people is never really addressed. She just is killing people now. And Okay, I mean, it's clear she's got some sort of trauma or problems and needs some therapy just from her actions and talking to herself and smacking herself in the head. But it definitely really addresses exactly what's going on there. And that's kind of the part that, you, well, if you can look past that, the rest of the film is kind of enjoyable of seeing people get their comeuppance. Amber is an enjoyable so psychopath to follow. And you do kind of feel. Bad for Agatha, as you see her making these... Uh, Agatha. But Agatha. I, I know a different Agatha. But Agatha is... She's making these bad choices. The gore effects are actually also pretty good in this film. But the acting isn't the strongest. Some characters are fine. Some are just, just over the top enough. But the gore effects kind of shine. The... Seeing, uh, towards the end, uh, Amber walking around in a dress made of human skin was eye-catching. So, there is a lot of entertaining here, and when the movie's trying to be funny, occasionally it is. So, this is not a great movie by any means, and on sheer technical level, I can't give this a very high rating. But it was oddly hypnotic for me. I don't really have too much to really complain about for this film other than the nonsensical start. Like, the commentary of the being led astray and, uh, 
if they'd built this up a little bit more, give the script a few more passes, this could have been something really interesting. I I enjoyed having the the killer as one of our nearly a protagonist. I mean, towards the end, she definitely goes full off the deep end and also is trying to kill Agatha. But up until that point, she was almost sort of an anti-hero trying to protect her friend. So if it had leaned more into that, this I would have definitely given this a higher rating because it, it could have been something a little different in that regard, but it does become pretty much just a standard slasher towards the end. So the middle is where the, this movie kind of come, came alive for me. Though admittedly it does get a bit repetitive of go to a, then, of then I'll go to a party, something bad happens and someone turns up dead. They go to another party, something bad happens and someone turns up dead. And it repeats like three times, so all the, this college seems to do is parties. There's like three or four parties that happen throughout this where these issues are happening. So, yeah. And I still cinematic because it's all around Halloween and these are Halloween parties, so okay, sure. But I did actually have kind of a good time with Blood Pie, more than I really should have. I'm only going to give it a two MacGuffins, because really that's the most it really deserves. But there's a better movie trying to get out of this. So, if you're up for a bad movie night, this will do fine. It's something that if it's out in the background at like a party, it's a good place for it. It's, it's not to be taken seriously, and it's alright. I probably liked it a lot more than I should have, but maybe just his sweet spot for me. Alright, all for this one. Back to Shutter tomorrow. See you guys then.